Good morning, Sip. <laughs> Good morning. How nice are you sip. guys? Good. Good hey, I'm watching you Tuesday night on uh, television. Uh, you looked awful stressed. You tried to handle it well. But you look like uh, the body language experts were. Why is he sitting on the edge of his chair? Um, just like always, looked a little stressed. Little jittery. Yeah. I always sit on the edge. I don't know why. I I don't. I feel if I sit back, it looks like I'm not into it. Oh. Um. So I always do, I try to sit on the edge all the time. Be engaged. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to engage you in a little conversation here about your and our favorite offensive coordinator, but. This is a general offensive thing because the offense has to find a way to score points, whether it be this weekend in Columbus or in the month of November. Uh-huh. Why Why do you think it is so difficult right now just to do the basic concepts of offense well? I Well, they're not winning one-on-one, um, which the, the head coach has pointed out. I think the defenses are on to them a little bit. Um, it's not as simple as saying you can man them up because it's not, that's not exactly what's always happening. But for instance, for instance, Indiana manned up Nebraska's receivers on the perimeter. They're the you know, corners are pressing the receivers. Nebraska receivers aren't doing a good job of getting the line of scrimmage, not doing a good job of winning downfield. Um, so, okay. Okay. There's that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're li- very limited in the run game. You don't have, I mean, you're 99th nationally in in rushing offense. That's not what Matt Rule planned at all. Okay, 99th nationally, 14th in the Big Ten. Okay, so it's it, I should have probably started the conversation right there. So that that wasn't part of the plan. Okay, so now it affects the entire plan. And I don't. I think that they're not getting what they thought they would from. And I don't mind saying it because these guys are. 22 and 23 or 24 years old banks and they uh i'm not i don't they're not you're, totally to blame they're not totally to blame obviously but there's a lot of deficiency and and then so i'd close on this all of this deficiency and it winds back to hey freshman hey hey rookie quarterback you got to figure we got to figure out how to do this it's a really hard situation. I want to go back to what was brought up by Satterfield on Tuesday because, and your your follow up question when he talked about the uh, mind, the offensive mindset, the running game, and having that mindset, and and what it takes to win in the Big Ten, and, and you know, paraphrasing, but we all remember what was said. You followed up with, "Is it a patience thing?" And uh, Sip, you you got to you got to take me through this as most of us were hearing that in exchange you asked that question about patience almost in a confused manner as well I, I, were were you genuinely taken off guard by his <laughs> his thought on the offense the running game mindset and and that whole part of the Marcus Satterfield uh, press conference yeah so I, I mean I was that part of it um, for sure, the, the running game discussion didn't elicit confidence in my mind, mm-hmm. and probably not in other people's mind. I, I, I mean, I asked mainly about patience because sometimes, in, or often in the run game, it's about patience. Yeah. You know, it's about hammering away and hammering away, and hopefully those, you know, hopefully the two yard runs become five, and etc. You yeah. guys know now. And I don't, I never see patience from him. Um, and I, I don't know now, then, then, then the question becomes, are, is he, what, how much is the head coach involved in that discussion? Um, I don't know, but, but the part that, and again, paraphrasing, cause I don't have this, I don't have that story in front of me. The part that caused me some degree of, or a, probably a large degree of concern was he said, he's got to do a better job of basically of, being innovative, that doing a better job of teaming up the run plays, which doesn't jibe at all with what the head coach mm-hmm. has been telling us pretty much all along, yeah. which is yeah. got to start with a run game and then we'll work off that. And, 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 he, and he says the conventional run game, the running back run game. Um, 
and then we'll work off that with play action. So where I always come down on this discussion is if you're not running the ball with your running backs well and you want to work off that with play action, then then what? Now what's plan B? Mm-hmm. That's the that's the, I don't and I don't see a plan B right now. Well, we might live in a world where Heinrich Harburg lives, leads Nebraska in rushing two straight games, depending on what his workload looks like on Saturday. I mean, I didn't think we'd in the middle of 2024 be in that situation. Let's offense is getting a lot of discussion, but we have to have a defensive conversation as well. Um, but I think Tony Tony has identified what their problem is. And I don't think they'll say it publicly as much because they don't want to give a lot away. But I think they've addressed it, and now can they fix it? That's the next part of it. But, you know, they they at least – they know what the problem is, and they're like, oh, man, one stop one hole here, stop one hole here. But looking at the defense, Sip, and knowing whether it be Ohio State on the front end or at the back end, Iowa, are you going to recalibrate your expectations of this defense at all, or are you going to go, hmm, just two two straight offenses that are pretty dynamic. They're going to face to finish October. Wow, that's a good. That's a good. No, I've already recalibrated because right? because I mean I'm not going to get caught again on this. I, and I was one of the per- people erroneously that thought maybe you were trending toward the elite level defense. <laughs> I mean, I laughed because I, I couldn't have been more wrong. Because there's no way. You can never sell that again. No, not not this year. The, you, you you don't you can't say yeah they're elite except for that one game. No, mm-hmm. that's not. You can't do that. So it's not elite. What is? It? That's the question. I don't know. I it's been kind of up and down, right? It's been an up and down ride for the defense. And when it's up and down, that's not elite. It's it's kind of tackling poorly against Northern Iowa, which has proven to be a really, I mean, they're, they're having a bad year. Um, and then it's not looking good against Illinois by their own admission, by Ty Robinson saying we were disgusted with the way we played against Illinois. But then, then two good games against inferior competition, inferior offenses, yeah. but still look good. Two good games. I mean, really, really strong against Rutgers. Really strong, and I thought, okay, they they have something going. And then came Saturday, and that's what's why it rocked kind of our foundation of what we thought, right? It it's rocked our the way we look at the program. That was the most surprising thing of the game: the defense has collapsed. Mm-hmm. I tell, I mean, I knew Indiana had some potential at the skill positions. I didn't know they'd win up front like they would. So. That now, where are we? I don't know. It's a week to week thing. Yeah, and i I was getting a little bit of this on Saturday of the defense. You could make the argument the defense was struggling as a byproduct of the the offense's inconsistency, and maybe sure. in certain occasions. But my pushback on that sip, and I'm curious if you'd agree or not. When that game becomes fourteen to seven, and you're trying to grab any ounce of momentum you can in that game, oh, the yeah. defense needed a shutdown drive, and it was anything but that. So that's where I throw the defense back under the bus on that and say you had an opportunity to to cure all your ills from the the previous drives to get that one key shutdown and get the ball back to the offense after maybe they were feeling like they had something, and that was maybe what that was the dagger in my opinion. And so that's where Nick, I put the defense on blast. Nick, you nailed it. I thought that was the key to the game. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought that was the key to the game at 14 to 7. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Get a stop. Yep. So not only did they not get a stop at 21 to 21 to 7, Indiana came right b- back with a, a, a short drive with a few big plays and yep. bam, 28 to 7. No, you're a, no, you're 100% right. That 100% right. That was the key to the game in my mind. Because they got you're right, they got it to fourteen to seven, and for a fleeting moment, yeah. a fleeting moment, you thought, okay, the ball game now, now, now we're now we got a ball game. Mm-hmm. Fleeting moment because of what happened, because the defense didn't even come close to slowing them down at that point. Ball game, then it's over. You know, then it's twenty eight to seven at halftime. It was basically over, and then it became over with the pin. Yeah. Hey, is Rule capable of saying, let's circle the wagons, boys? 
You know, he said a couple of interesting things, Sip, of I'm going to fight for Nebraska. He said that mm-hmm. after the Purdue game. And, you know, he just wanted to remind people that the season didn't end by losing to Illinois. Then he talked about kind of it's the Huskers versus the world. And I don't know if he subtly threw us talking to his team, but that didn't work out so well. Does he have it in him to circle the wagons with his team? Like, show some anger, like really, really fight for the team if they'll fight for him. And you know what? We're in it. The walls are closing in, but we got to stick together. Does he, is that in his DNA right now in year two? You know, the public presentation of Matt Rule would suggest yes. And then, it, because he's really good in terms of public presentation, he really inspires confidence. Um, Mm -hmm. when he's at a podium. He's a dynamic speaker. His messages are... I love his messages. I always come out of them feeling good about who's leading the program. I I always find myself shaking my head. Yeah. Yeah, he's right. This is... He's exactly right here. Now, then I I always say this. um, I hope I haven't said too much on your show. But then there's this gaping void we have as analysts. And that is, we don't know what it's like every day on the daily, you know, what's it, what's it like in those walls at Memorial stadium? How are the kids responding? I mean, do they, res- I mean, I know this, I think I would respond to what he's saying, but are the kids responding? And you don't know, I, don't, I shouldn't say kids, how, are the players responding? And you, in, in guys, I'm of the belief that you don't know unless you're there all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I can, unless you, in, in meetings, you're at practice, you're seeing interactions in the training room. Um, what, what's it like every day? I, it'd be a, I, I just always, in these times, especially, I always wish I could be around there, but I mean, again, public presentation, one would think this team will rally around that head coach. What is in your opinion, and I know that the topics brought up of what does last Saturday do for people's overall season outlook, how many wins and, and and what have you. But in your opinion, success this Saturday against Ohio State would be what to you? Well, Nick, I just, I, I'm still sort of old school. And I, and I don't know how to – I never know how to answer these questions because I don't know who – are you talking about within the program or, or – the media fans. I, mean, I, I would I would say the most important thing, the program, because I mean they've got much like last year, you've got a, a month of November where you've got games that you can win and get bowl eligible. But what, what maybe the better question is what can't happen on Saturday to make people really be even more concerned about that final stretch of games? I'm gonna answer it this way first. First of all, it has to be within the program. We're going to win the game, not yeah. we're, we're just in damage control yeah. mode. That's my opinion. I now, agree. We saw in 2006, though. Remember 2006 going to USC? It always stands out <laughs> in my mind. That was damage control. Yep. Don't get position. blown out. Was, yeah, but we can't get blown out. Mm-hmm. That was the game plan. You wouldn't acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. I wouldn't either. I, it's fine. I didn't even have a huge problem with it. But... um. That was a case where a coach said, "I'm not. We're not getting blown out." Now, will Will Rule do that? You know, will he go there? He doesn't seem like that guy at all. But anyway, within the program, it's go win the game. That's. I hope that's what it is. Now, outside it, the way we look at it, mm-hmm. what would be, what would be, you know, acceptable for them coming out of Columbus? Uh, I mean. I can't speak for everybody. I'd say thirty-four to fourteen-ish, something like that. You know, if you can, you can do that. Um, it's, and it's not sixty-two to three. You know, we've seen that. Yep. Um, I I hate the conversation though. I hate it for the players. Yeah. I hate. It. I hope they. I hope they don't think anything. I hope within the program they think nothing like we're thinking. I hope so. Or uh, Saturday will be uh, worse than the previous Saturday. Safe, safe travels out to Columbus. Enjoy uh, the split press box uh, and enjoy the uh, flurry machine at uh, at Ohio State. They have a flurry machine? Yeah, you didn't know that? I didn't know that either. So back where they serve food, 
um, after like dinner or lunch is served, like during the game, especially for halftime, they have a, a, a McDonald's flurry machine. Whoa. Good God, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing took a huge turn for the better. Just yes. I, I hope it's working just, just for, your, for your case. But uh, uh, safe travels out there. Looking forward to the uh, coverage, my friend. I'll report to you, okay? Thank you very much. See you Take soon. care, guys. Thanks.